I'm Rachel Davis, and coming up on Mountaineer Playbook, we'll turn back time and take a look at the legacy of now former women's basketball head coach, Mike Carey. Thanks to Kentucky and Baylor, I'll be able to peacefully watch the Sweet 16 because my bracket is now busted. However, coming up on Mountaineer Playbook, I'm going to shed some positive light on this year's men's basketball season. And welcome into Mountaineer Playbook, your home for the best stories in West Virginia University sports. I'm Luke Wiggs, alongside the legend, Daniel Woods. For the first time in over two decades, there will be a new face patrolling the sidelines for the WVU women's basketball team. That's right, Luke. And while a short but memorable Mountaineer men's basketball career comes to an end, another is getting ready to start on the gridiron. That and more coming up next on Mountaineer Playbook. After a storied career leading the West Virginia University women's basketball program, Mike Carey has retired after 21 years at the helm. And despite a sudden end to his career, Coach Carey will be remembered for two decades of the most consistent success the Mountaineer ladies have seen on the court in school history. Rachel Davis took a look at Carey's tenure and what's next for WVU. Exactly one week ago, the West Virginia women's basketball team not only ended their season with an overall record of 15 wins and 15 losses, ranking them as number 7 in the Big 12 Conference, but also faced the loss of head coach Mike Carey. This West Virginia native announced his retirement on March 16th after serving almost 40 years as a basketball coach, 21 of those years being with the Mountaineers. Carey coached college basketball for a total of 34 seasons, including his 13 seasons coaching at Salem University. He will be retiring this season with an overall record of 735 wins and 341 losses. In his time here at West Virginia alone, he now holds the highest winning percentage in program history, with 447 wins and only 239 losses in a span of 21 years. Carey has guided the Mountaineers to 11 out of their 13 NCAA tournament appearances, 5 WNIT appearances, and holds the program record for 13 straight postseason appearances from 2007 to 2019. He was named Big East Conference Coach of the Year twice during his career, once in 2004 with a record of 25-11 and 11 on the season, and again in 2010 after a 29-6 and 6 season. Carey then earned the title of Big 12 Conference Coach of the Year in 2014 after putting up a school record season of 30-5. and five. In his 21 seasons here at West Virginia, Mike Carey coached 74 all-conference players, 10 WNBA players, and had 20 Mountaineers produce 1,000 career points. Mike Carey's hard work and dedication to the Mountaineer program has not gone unnoticed, and many West Virginia fans and staff thank him for taking this program to the next level. Daniel, you think about the Bill Fisks and Kitty Blakemores that helped establish this program. It's people like Mike Carey that deserve much credit to getting to this program to where it is today, and we certainly wish him the best. There's no doubt that Mike Carey has put enough time and effort into West Virginia women's basketball over the years to have earned himself a nice retirement. Director of Athletics Shane Lyons has already appointed Nitra Perry, who's been with the program as an assistant coach for the past two seasons, as interim head coach for the time being. And what was a somewhat underwhelming season for WVU Hoops? A few players became a bright spot as the season went on. Transfer Malik Curry came alive in the second half of last season and became a scorer the Mountaineers could rely on. Our own Corey Jackson has more on the transfer. Coming into this season, there were a few new faces that WVU would have to get accustomed to, Malik Curry being one of them. Curry started at Palm Beach State before he made his splash at Old Dominion University where he thrived. He averaged a career-high 15.7 points per game in his second season with the Old Dominion Monarchs. That kind of success drew Curry's attention to the transfer portal, where maybe his name could be on a bigger national stage. That process led Malik to Morgantown, West Virginia. WVU and Malik were like a match made in heaven. However, it took a while for Malik to get accustomed to the WVU atmosphere. I always had that one problem adjusting to schools in the beginning, like um, junior college, uh, ODU, like it's been like a pattern, like and once I get comfortable, it starts to show in a good way. Um, coming from Conference USA, you know, 
Um, it's, it's big dudes in Conference USA, but not like Big 12. Like, you got athletes all over. You got NBA players, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you just got to figure out how to get your shots, you know, and where to get your shots at. If there's one thing Malik knows how to do is get his shots, whether it's a hesitation on a crossover or a long three ball, Malik is a professional scorer and knows how to put the ball in the hoop. One game that really highlights that was his performance against the Texas Longhorns on February 26th. Curry exploded for a career high 27 points and added two steals. Although Malik's time here at West Virginia was short and may be over, his impact will never be forgotten, and neither will all of his buckets. I'm Corey Jackson, reporting for Mountaineer Playbook. We think of Chef Curry, of course, as the point guard for the Golden State Warriors, but Malik Curry can cook as well, and it was a joy watching him represent the state of West Virginia last year. You know, you're right, Luke, and with plenty of spots to fill on the roster for next season, including Malik Curry's, Bob Huggins and the coaching staff are certainly going to be busy when it comes to recruiting this offseason. Meanwhile, baseball season is in full swing for the Mountaineers, and things are certainly heating up with a diamond. Nicole Harasek is here with another Mountaineer Playbook Play of the Week. Nicole? Thank you guys and welcome back to another Mountaineer Play of the Week segment where we highlight the best moments in WVU sports. On last week's episode, Frank McConnell co-hosted our Play of the Week segment with an incredible stolen base performance from Tevin Tucker on the WVU baseball team. We searched WVU athletics, we searched through ESPN+. Plus. There were a bunch of great plays this week in WVU sports, but one really stole the show. That was Austin Davis's walk-off single in the ninth inning, which gave the Mountaineers a 7-6 win over the Ohio State Buckeyes, splitting the game series. Davis went 2-5 for five and scored a run, registering the game-winning run batted in, in game two. Austin Davis is having a great season so far as the senior on the team with four runs batted in. Well, we'll be back for another Mountaineer Play of the Week next time. For now, we'll send it back to Daniel and Luke. Guys? Thanks, Nicole. With a ton of speed and skill, the Mountaineer baseball team has already provided a ton of excitement, Luke, and Big 12 play hasn't even started. Yeah, that's absolutely right, Daniel. Big 12 play is going to make or break this season for Randy Mazie's squad. Four of the nine teams in the Big 12 are ranked in the top 25 right now, so it's not going to be an easy feat if they want to make it back to postseason play for the third time in the last five years. And I know plenty of Mountaineer fans that would love to see WVU host another regional in the NCAA tournament again, and I think Randy Mazie and the players would certainly like to get back there as well. We're only halfway through this week's edition of Mountaineer Playbook. Don't go away. I'm Sophia Pisano, and straight ahead on Mountaineer Playbook, I'll tell you how our next player of the week is wrestling their way to a national championship. I'm Daniel Woods, and coming up on Mountaineer Playbook, I'll tell you about a WVU football newcomer who's had a long journey here, but is making the most of his first opportunity wearing the flying WV. Welcome back to Mountaineer Playbook. There's been a number of great performances recently in the old gold and blue, but there can only be one Mountaineer Playbook student athlete of the week. You're right, Luke, and for this one, we're going to head to the mat as Sophia Pisano joins us from Studio B to tell us which athlete stood apart this week. Sophia? Thanks, Daniel. Luke, our player of the week this week has made history, being the third ever Mountaineer to win Big 12s for his sport. But he isn't celebrating quite yet. I spent some time mat side with wrestler Killian Cardinal to find out why he has such a unique outlook on this accomplishment. Killian Cardinal signed his name in the history books last week as he claimed the third ever Big 12 Wrestling Championship title for WVU. As a redshirt senior competing in the 125 pound division, he claimed an 8-3 decision over the previous year's champion Brody Teske from Northern Iowa. Cardinal went into the tournament in Tulsa as the top seed, but he didn't let that get to his head. 
He says the key to success is to take each match step by step and not overthink the outcome. But the fight is not over yet. Next week, Cardinal will travel down to Detroit, Michigan to compete in the NCAA tournament, and he's keeping that same mindset. The job is not finished yet. You know, we got we got next week nationals. I mean, really, I'm just going in there zero zero. It's like because anyone can win that tournament uh, if your mind's right. Killian transferred from Old Dominion University last year as a redshirt junior to West Virginia University. He placed seventh at NCAA's. Since then, he has stepped up into a leadership role for the team, according to head coach Tim Flynn. As far as the leadership role, he's really stepped into that. You know, um, I think it took him a while because he was a transfer and didn't know everybody. But, you know, I, I think when you're one of the better guys and when you're one of the hardest workers, you know, he's going to be a leader, right? Sophomores Peyton Hall, Dennis Robin, and redshirt sophomore Michael Wolfgram will join Cardinal as they travel to Detroit to compete at Nationals. After winning two rounds, Cardinal fell to Arizona State's Brandon Courtney at Nationals. The gold might be out of reach, but now he has his eyes set on a podium finish and will take on Brody Teske and Patrick McKee in Russellback. Back to you guys at the Waterfront Studio. It was a solid showing for both him and WVU Wrestling at the NCAAs. With a quarterfinal appearance in Detroit, Cardinal joined Peyton Hall among the nation's elite, with Hall earning All-American status with an eighth-place finish at 165 pounds. Moving from the mat to the field, the West Virginia football team has seen a lot of turnover in the last three years since Neil Brown has taken over for Dana Holgerson. One of the newest faces on the gridiron is junior college transfer Lee Koba. With a fiery personality and motivation to lead, he's brought a new mentality to the roster for the Mountaineers. It's often said that it's about the journey and not the destination. But in his short time at his destination of Morgantown, East Mississippi Community College transfer linebacker Lee Koba certainly seems to be enjoying himself at WVU. And it's paying dividends, according to head football coach Neil Brown. Lee Koba, junior college transfer at Mike Linebacker. Um, he's come and really established himself from the first week he was here. Uh, one of our hardest workers, um, extremely um, uh, appreciative, um, has a lot of gratitude, uh, one of our best teammates in a relatively short time. The trek to Morgantown has been a long one for Koba, who initially verbally committed to West Virginia out of high school, but flipped to Syracuse and spent two years with the Orange before deciding to go the junior college route and signing with the Mountaineers after an explosive season at East Mississippi. WVU defensive coordinator Jordan Leslie says Koba's bringing a unique level of intensity and leadership to the practice field and the locker rooms here at the Milan Pushkar Center, WVU's home outside of Mountaineer Field. He's ultra competitive. Um... I think I saw him talking trash to a tire the other day as he was flipping it. And so he didn't have to have a competition from, from a human. He had to, you know, so he just, he's got that type of mentality that you want at that position. Leslie believes that Koba's perseverant mentality is a key for this West Virginia team and something he'd like to see develop elsewhere on the roster. You know, Lee, not, not big mistakes, but he makes mistakes, whether it's, you know, didn't touch the right cone or whatever, and he always owns it. And that's the one thing about it. he owns everything that he does wrong. He fixes it, moves on to the next rep, um, which, again, is something that I think overall we, we've got to do a better job of. Koba will compete to fill the Mike linebacker position vacated by departed 2021 starter Josh Chandler Semedo. Lee Koba certainly isn't the guy I want to see as a running back running through the C-gap. I saw what he did to that tire. No, thank you. Absolutely right. Watching some of those clips of him making tackles, it's like watching a sea monster swallow a ship whole. <laughs> Nonetheless, that's going to do it for this week's edition of Mountaineer Playbook. That's all the time we have. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.